Hello, good afternoon. The business secretary, Lord Mandelson, has told workers in Luton he'll do everything he can to safeguard their jobs. He's been visiting the IBC factory in Luton this morning. The Canadian car parts group Magna is in talks to take over GM Europe, Vauxhall's parent company. The Luton plant makes its Vivaro van. Well, Mike Cartwright is in Luton now. Mike. Carol, we're on the van production line here. Very rare indeed for the immediate allowed here. It's got some incredible access really. This is what they make here, look, the Vivaro van. It's rebadged really, essentially four times for Opel, Renault and a bunch of others. Now 66,000 of these rolled off this production line last year, but that's down a half. There's been pay cuts and shift cuts as well. And there's general concern here about what any new owner is going to do to this site. If you have a look at these pictures, this is Lord Mandelson arriving today. He spoke to bosses, he spoke to union reps, and he told us that he's been speaking to all the potential buyers of this plant. And we asked him what he was doing to try and secure the future of this plant. What I'm doing on behalf of the British government is to make sure that we do absolutely everything that humanly, politically, financially we can to safeguard British production and British jobs, and that's what I'm going to continue doing. What he's essentially offering is sort of a safety net to any loans that come into these companies. Now, the unions say this is a positive move, uh, Mandelson, coming here today, but this is Steve Black, who works on the line. Steve, just briefly tell us what you do here. I do uh, ding and bump and uh, any little chips or anything on the vehicles to repair them to go out. Right, OK. Now, Lord Mandelson's been here today. Um, reassuring for you? Not really. I think it's just another government being and saying we'll help people, but they don't. They seem more interested in helping banks than a normal working-class person who works for his living and has to earn money to pay for stuff, not like the MPs that get it given to them for doing hardly anything. Right. And that's basically how I feel about his visit. It's just a token gesture. Right. Very government. worried about your job? Very worried. Okay. Like most people in here, we've all got bills to pay. Right. And Steve, thank you very much yeah. indeed. Well, Magna are the preferred bidder. Uh, the negotiations are going on. We should know some of the detail of those negotiations by the end of this month, hopefully. Back to you. Thank you very much, Mike. A man has been jailed for 12 years for murdering a man in Essex. 33-year-old Daniel Berry was stabbed in October last year following an argument. James Pearson was found guilty of murder last month. Daniel Berry's family described him as a kind-hearted gentleman with a wonderful sense of humour. 250 members of the Light Dragoons are taking part in a big ground offensive against Taliban strongholds in Helmand province. The soldiers, who are based at Swanton Morley in Norfolk, are among 700 British troops taking part in Operation uh, Panther Claw, a major campaign against the Taliban north of Lashkar Gah. On a visit to Norwich today, the Shadow Defence Secretary said their rule, role was crucial. Unless we are able to have the numbers on the ground that are able to control the space, we can't get any reconstruction coming in behind. So it's necessary, first of all, to clear the Taliban uh, and those elements which are, are causing uh, instability. A military historian who posed as a Falklands war hero has been exposed as a fake. The former soldier and author even attended a reunion with his medals, but he was only an army chef. This special report from Julian Sturdy. On parade with his medals, Jack Livesey likes to play the role of para-hero. A Falklands veteran, bravery in battle won him the military medal during one of his tours of Northern Ireland, or so he claims. Today, we can expose the fantasy. Jack Livesey, the military historian, has built a career on his army record, writing books, advising film companies, and taking battlefield tours boasting on his website about his exploits with two para. He joined the army where, thanks to his shooting skills, he found himself in the parachute regiment. This was his life for the next 20 years, including five tours of duty in Northern Ireland, where he won the military medal and the Falklands War. Two years ago, the Imperial War Museum at Duxford commemorated the 25th anniversary of the Falklands. Jack Livesey was there, posing as a veteran. Being here, it's... It's very difficult because you've got lots of happy memories but also lots of sad memories and it's a day to come to terms with that particular war, that incident in my life. But let's have a closer look at those medals. First, the prestigious military medal for gallantry. He didn't get it. The General Service Medal for Northern Ireland, work as a chef, entitles him to that one. The South Atlantic Medal with Rosette, he wasn't in the battle. And finally, a UN Peacekeeping Medal for Cyprus, another fake. 
And then there's the famous Paris wings on his ties and the lapels. But the Ministry of Defence confirmed our records indicate that Jack Livesey only served in the British Army in the Army Catering Corps from December 1971 to April 74. Well, I was absolutely appalled because we lost good friends in the Falklands especially and for him to purport that he was there actually fighting alongside them I think is absolutely disgusting. The man is, I think, very, very talented and he's got great knowledge of all the credits that he has behind his name. More than 200 British servicemen died in the Falklands. The men of two para who fought together still stick together. It is the military medal that really, really gripes me and many other people. A medal for valour. A medal more than likely for saving your comrades' lives okay, in the heat of battle. And that degrades that medal. And how he can justify wearing a military medal, I just don't know. It's, it really, really does give me so much angst. For seven years, Jack Livesey worked at the Imperial War Museum at Duxford, first as a volunteer, then as a collections assistant. A spokesman said they couldn't comment on his military record, but it was not a qualification for the job. At his home in Sawston, Jack Livesey stood by all his website claims, saying he'd sent off for his record to prove it. He tried to convince us he was also in the Intelligence Corps, something the Army insists is not in his record. Julian Sturdy, BBC Look East.